Okay, turning now to a little weather talk, as Chief Meteorologist Matt Safino published this story on KGW.com just a few days ago. La Nina and the blob could boost Oregon winter storms. Matt joins us now. Okay, Matt, help explain to us what you mean, because as you point out in the article, seasonal forecasting is far from an exact science. Yeah, it's tricky, especially when you have two big things going at it like this, kind of like, if you will, Godzilla and King Kong. You never know which one's going to win, right? <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> All right, so let's go through this a little bit, too. We'll start with La Nina, and La Nina is, is really quite well understood, and we understand the implications that it typically has on weather in North America. So what is La Nina? La Nina is a change in the sea surface temperature patterns along the equatorial Pacific Ocean, and you can see it here. These are the sea surface temperatures of today. Do you see this kind of curly area of yellows? That's cooler than normal water extending from the coast of South America well into the Central Pacific. Classic signature of La Nina. What that does is it pushes more warm water farther west. That in turn changes where the heat and the moisture are added to the atmosphere in great quantities, and that changes the position of the jet stream, which is why it impacts our winter weather way up here in North America, even though that's happening thousands of miles away over the ocean. So that's La Nina, a little refresher on La Nina, cooler than normal ocean water in the central and eastern equatorial Pacific Ocean. Let's switch to the northern Pacific Ocean. And again, this is just sea surface temperatures, but look at all this warm water here, right? So let's look at the difference from normal. We call that an anomaly. What's the anomaly in our sea surface temperatures? Well, everywhere in yellow and orange is warmer than normal water. And look at this. Wow. It extends, right? It extends from the west coast here in North America, clear over to Asia. That is the blob. <laughs> now, the difference between the blob and La Nina, even though they're both ocean conditions, is the blob basically forms because of the atmospheric conditions above it. So if we get high pressure and a lack of storms, you don't get upwelling of cooler water. You don't get mixing of the water from storms with the cooler water below. So the surface water just heats up, especially in summer. And that can have an impact on the weather and nearby land masses. For instance, we had several nights this summer, uh, Blair, that were much warmer than normal. Our average overnight lows this summer were really very, very warm. And part of that may be because our ocean was warm. We also had a stretch of uh, higher humidity days late in summer, also impacted by the warmer water here in the nearby ocean to the west coast, Oregon, California, and Washington, right? So what happens when you put these two together? How does that impact our winter weather? That's the big question, right? So first of all, let me talk about what it takes to destroy the blob, okay? <laughs> what will kill the blob? Well, what will kill the blob are a lot of Pacific storms. And we begin to see that as we go into the fall season, more and more stormy weather across the Pacific Ocean. Here's one more quick look at the blob. This is Asia, this is North America, everywhere in yellow and orange, above average temperatures there. So that's just another way of looking. And I have to ask, why is yeah. it called the blob? Couldn't they come up with a better name? I think it's kind of a great name. You love it? I kind of do. Okay. It's very descriptive <laughs> and it, 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 it was named because oceanographers and meteorologists noticed this blob of really warm water sure, okay. out over the ocean and it just sort of stuck. Sure. <laughs> yeah. I, do you know about the La Nina name? You know why it's called La Nina? Remind me. It's because the fishermen, this is like a couple hundred years ago, off of Peru and Ecuador, noticed that around Christmas time, the water became warmer than normal. That's the El Nino, okay, which is the opposite of La Nina. And when it got colder than normal, they said, well, let's call, and they named it El Nino because in Spanish, that's, you know, the boy or the Christ child. So they named the cool one La Nina, the counterpart of El Nino. So that's how that got its name. So back to the blob destroyers, right? What you need for that are storms to stir up the ocean. And this is from now through the next 10 days where you see the tight circles, concentric circles, that's where you have storms. Where you don't see that, where they're wide apart, that's high pressure. That's a blob maintainer like that. These are blob destroyers coming along these storms. And we see them ringing the Pacific Ocean, but never really cutting through the heart of the blob which is not unusual because we usually do have high pressure over that part of the Pacific Ocean. But as we go deeper into winter, we would expect more storms, and there's one right there to help to churn the ocean. So I think the blob is more likely to get beaten back, if you will, than La Nina. So let's sum it up this way. First of all, typical La Nina weather pattern over the Pacific and North America, strong polar jet, strong uh, Pacific jet, they come together right over us. So we usually get wet and stormy winters with a lot of variety in the Northwest, usually great for mountain snow. That's happening. So 
Sum it up this way, blob and La Nina. The blob may enhance La Nina because there's more warm water out there to feed the jet stream. On the other hand, La Nina could just destroy the blob with a lot of storms. Either way, and I favor La Nina over the blob, I think it's got more staying power, we're likely going to have a cool and wet winter with plenty of mountain snow. So there you go, food for thought. Okay, Matt, thanks so much. You bet. We're back right after this.